go back to that. So sorry, guys. Um, on your screen, the question is going to show up, and you can give us a yes and no, or a thumbs up or a thumbs down in the chat. And Carl, I'm going to ask you just to let me know how that is going. So <clears throat> here you guys go. Here is your question to you. And for those who are just listening in, the question is, who has spent any amount of time learning how to use AI like ChatGPT? Thumbs up, thumbs down. So while we're waiting for the thumbs up and down to come in, uh, Dan Newman is very excited being a Dan. Um, he's now the network activator, um, which is very exciting about. Yes, <laughs> Dan, our dorsal attentional networks, which help us to focus. Dan is activated when we are looking for very particular things or we are goal oriented. How are we doing there? What's our responses looking like? Yeah, I would say about 70% thumbs up. Okay, amazing. Yeah. Uh, follow up. Let's right. get that, let's get the follow-up question to this. How many of you know how it works? <laughs> That's me, by the way. Homer represents me trying to learn anything about technology. <laughs> We got some yeses, some what, some issues. Okay. A few yeses actually, yeah. A bright bunch on this uh, on this webinar. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Keep your hands above those above those uh, thumbs up, thumbs downs, because I got the second question coming at you right now. How many of you have spent any amount of time learning about your brain? And yes, I did just trap you. So just like enjoy this. <laughs> Quite and then I have to say on this call. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. wait a second. Follow-up question to that, everybody. How many of you know how it works? And in the parentheses it says, be honest for scientists will know if you're lying. <laughs> I didn't. I walked around with mine for like over 30 years. I had no idea what my brain did at all. I can admit that. A few more thumbs down this time. Uh, a few thumbs ups as well and some more issues. Really? I feel like I feel like we'd also if, if there was an option to do both at the same time, we'd probably get <laughs> we probably get that. So the question is, you know, why one science over another because it's so crazy that we learned to use a technology almost instantly and we adapted to it. But the coolest thing on the planet, which is us, our brains, we're still yet to learn about. So why one science over, over the other? So I'm going to go to, to Elliot now, um, which is we know that you don't need to know everything about the brain. People don't need to go as far deep down the rabbit holes as, as, as I do, as learning scientists that I am, that you do as the academic that, that you are. But Elliot, could you maybe share experience um, as a teacher, as a professor, and how we can bring a little bit more of this conscious awareness to how we can start seeing learning and seeing bright, uh, brain science with like that little bit less I guess, intimidation or overwhelm so that we can adapt it into the everyday. Sure. Yeah. So I think a lot of people have jumped into to AI and maybe rightfully so. There's a lot of really cool things that it can do, but it's kind of a black box for a lot of people because basically you see what the output is and it's not always clear how it gets to where it gets to. And then also if you feed the model bad information, you're going to get bad information out. So unfortunately, a lot of neuro myths get stuck and they go through the language processor, and then by the, by the time it comes out, they come out as being neuromyths that are said to be true. So one of the things that I suggest that we do is, is kind of do, do the harder thing, which is to spend time to, to learn this material. And lots of material is intimidating when it first starts. So for me, it's kind of my job to teach kind of intimidating material. I teach statistics and neuroscience. So at first, everyone kind of comes in and they're a little scared and intimidated, but once I tell them like we can learn this piece by piece and it's not going to be that bad, first they don't believe me, and then as time goes on, they believe me more and more and it tends to work out. So neuroscience, just like any other science or anything you learn, you, you take it piece by piece, step by step, and it's definitely something that you can learn just with a little bit of dedication and a little bit of time. 
Thank you, Elliot. Um, and I think, so for those of you, I see, uh, I just kind of scrolled the chat a little bit while, while Elliot was, was speaking. I know that there are some of you um, who have gone through the journey of joining forces with your brain, that, that series. And I think Elliot can vouch. Elliot was the lead um, validation person for me on the science. My whole board was involved in joining forces with your brain. And it took um, every Every release that we've done thus far, joining forces with your brain, has taken us, I think, you know, well, a year, if not more, um, to not only go through the science, to disseminate the science, to break down the practical. It has taken hours and hours and hours of time to bring this to you, but so that we could show you that it can be accessible, it can be practical, but we don't expect you <laughs> to go through 10,000 million white papers like we do um, in order to, to do the research. So uh, get your get your hands ready over those uh, keyboards again, because I do have a very curious question, something that I, I wanted to understand. Um, I know that there's a lot of us here who are in the learning and development uh, industry or profession, but we've also probably got some academics, we've got some people in sales and product management and marketing um, who may want to understand how can we start integrating more of the sciences, the human sciences and the learning sciences, um, but there's going to be some roadblocks. So from the options on your screen, can you just type in the chat um, which might resonate more with you? So like, why aren't we doing this? Is it because A, it just feels uncomfortable, it feels like a big change or too big of a change? Or is it B, um, we're not sure how to start or how to bring the practices, you know, even for ourselves or into our organizations? Or is it C, which I hear a lot of, uh, the powers that be keep spending the budget on things we don't really want? And Carl, I'm just going to ask uh, you to let me know what's going on in the chat. So there's your options there. Why aren't we doing this? You're on mute, Carl. <laughs> it's raining so hard outside that I've, uh, yeah, I keep going on mute, smashing into my window. Um, so we've got a lot of Bs, mainly Bs coming in and a few Cs, uh, lots of Bs and a sprinkling of Cs. Okay, this is great. And I just want to share with everyone that any of the responses that you're giving, first of all, they're going to be completely anonymous, but I do want to share these with our with our larger community, right? To, so we can open up not only the conversation, it's how do we actually take action on this. Now, something that I wanted to do, um, which is very, you know, I'm, I'm not going to bias what you might say about what you're about to see. Um, I did a search, just a, a plain Google search. And I went through LinkedIn over the past year. And you know those, if everyone, you know, probably is on LinkedIn, you've seen these trends. You know, what are the trends? What are the trends? In 2023, you're going to see a bunch of these shows up, show up, excuse me. And these are from like formidable places that, you know, you would have seen in the industry. None of these, there's a lot of them. I'm not, this isn't even half of what I found online. None of these predictions for L&D in 2023 had anything to say about learning how to learn learning sciences or upskilling us in the learning process itself. None of them. And I'm just going to make, really emphasize that. None of them. And here's what's really um, disturbing to me, or maybe it was serendipitous, because this popped up yesterday on LinkedIn, which was a survey that went out to the global community asking, what are the trends for 2024? And as we can see, once again, learning sciences, human sciences, just not on there. You know, I just feel like if we are, we're just well on our way to repeating the same things that we've been doing again and again and again. But if we don't make the decision to change our behaviors, if we don't make a decision to start cultivating these like new and wonderful learning habits that we all have the abilities to do, then we're just not going to be able to move forward and use the technologies to use the things that are at our disposal, but mostly our brains to the best of our abilities. Now, in the chat, if you feel any of the sentiment that I do, if you are a little bit tired, if you're a little bit frustrated, or if you've just kind of had enough of seeing these same things year after year after year, then please put a yar in that chat. How are we doing, Carl? Anyone else a little bit concerned or frustrated with me? <laughs> Lots of yards flying in. I mean, a lot. Um, yeah. M many people backing you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Good, because otherwise this would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> 
I made a I scientific. We got a million at yards was the last one that just came in. I, a million <laughs> years, yes. I made a, I made a prediction here. Okay, so I'm happy that you did that because otherwise, I don't like this webinar is over. I would have hung up on all of you. <laughs> but seeing how we don't want to do that, um, let's talk a little bit then about how can we get this more into you all seem to have the desire to we need you to help advocate for this but how can we actually help you do this um elliot i've got my suggestions but um i'm gonna let you start if you were going to give some advice to the the people who have joined us here today the people who are going to be watching this on the replay as to how we could help to get this more accessible and more um integrated into their processes in their organizations what would you suggest to them Sure. Yeah. So I think what it starts with is buy-in and what, what starts with is return on investment. And the idea is employees, workers, wherever they are, they're, they're spending so much of their day doing things. And a lot of times it's not optimized. And just by optimizing a process that takes about a couple of hours to learn how to do, the efficiency that one can do it becomes so much faster that productivity goes through the roof. So I think at the beginning, it starts with buy-in. And I think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that there is buy-in. I think in the learning science, ROI has become a bigger and bigger push because top-down management is asking for it. And I think that we're developing better measures to show the efficacy of learning design. Amazing. And I will... I will piggyback on what Elliot said is... Um, and again, this is... this gathering of ours today, and I think a lot of you know me personally would know this was not meant to be a sales pitch for joining forces or anything like that. This was an awakening that we wanted to, to bring to everyone and to share with the, the, you know, the rest of the public once we're done here today. But for me, in the years and years and years that I've been working in the industry and the going on seven years um, that I've been in business with Learning Pirate, I started Learning Pirate because once I started learning about these things, I could not go back to the way that things were done before. It was just impossible. Um, I knew how to not only learn better, but to design better, um, but also just how to be a better person and what this operational system of mine was doing. And I think that's always the message that comes with anything that I share with all of you, which is let's learn about us a little bit first, and then we can integrate it into whatever learning, any learning design, any projects that we want to do. But it's so much more beneficial at the first level to learn about us as fundamental human beings. Um, so that's the, the first. So if we start looking at this, and my suggestion to getting this into your organization, just getting into your personal lives is to treat it like a beautiful journey and an experiment. We just, you know, if someone handed you a page of the operational manual of you, would you want to read it? I, I can't stop reading it. I love it. And then lean on myself. Lean, Carl is really great at putting up posts that disseminate some of this and, you know, just really easy practical applications, but lean on the translators to come in and to help you. And when it comes to buy-in, like Elliot was saying, ROI is obviously important for businesses. We get that. There's money to be made. There's time to be saved. All of that. I cannot think of a better investment and not to position it. And this is my advice to anyone who's looking for buy-in with their internal stakeholders. Don't position it necessarily as learning. Position this as human development. Position it as growth and invest in that way. So that would be my my first sort of like and my sort of summary of how we can do this. Um, you can do all employee webinars. You can do all employee keynotes. You can do, you know, if you're doing a global learning week or if you're doing um, an AGM, you can invite people like myself, Elliot, any of us just to come in and just to break that barrier and to show them that learning and science can be just as fun as this webinar was or, you know, go check out joining forces with your brain. It, it's just full of laughter and inquisition and curiosity and a lot of surprise. Those are the ways that we can start helping you get this into your organizations. So as we come to, to the last few minutes here, um, I mean, this I am going to share as part of our data from our quick and dirty 30 minutes together, but how many of you, and I'm gonna share this on LinkedIn, I'm gonna share this on the social channel so that the leaders who are in charge can see that this is something that you guys want to do. Give me a big old yar if you would like to see this brought in to your learning plans, brought in to your strategies, brought into your organizations, but brought into your personal lives, just so you can do a little bit more, be a little bit better for yourself and for everyone else. Give me those yars in the chat. 
another avalanche. <laughs> which is which is great um, okay i just assumed yes i was going to say you mentioned you wanted the trailer up um so i've just posted that in the chat if anyone wants to go and see the trailer on that oh thank you carl um yeah actually so here i just i put up i screenshot this just before we all jumped online today um there the first five chapters of joining forces is up on youtube it's all of 20 minutes elliot's there i'm there um, there's a lot of surprises in there. See how you feel about it. See how you feel about, you know, learning a little bit about the brain in this type of way. Um, and I'm just going to conclude this with a massive thank you to Richard, who couldn't be here, uh, to Elliot and to Carl. Thank you so much just for, you know, being part of the crew. For all of the Learning Pirate crew who are on today, you guys are amazing. I see some of the the attendees who are in part of the first uh, Designing Learning with Science cohort. Clara, I saw you. Um, and just to thank all of you and, you know, like I said, don't hesitate to reach out. We really want to help you bring this into your lives. We really want to help bring this into the organizations. But overall, I think a lot of you know that my mission is to be part of the evolution of learning as a whole. So you let me know how we can help and we will do our best to do so. Until then, my friends, I wish you all a big yard. Oh, Carl. Well, one someone. other thing, <laughs> if you're yeah. looking to bring the science of learning into your organization. There's now an offering in place for that. And I've just shared the PDF of that. I'll share it again. Oh. Um, so that's in the chat. And that has all the information you need if you're interested in bringing joining forces um, either into your learning development team in order to improve the design of your learning or also for employees as well to give them an edge. So to give them an understanding of how to how to learn. So I've dropped some information on that in the chat. Thank you so much. I just saw, I just dropped into the chat again. Mo Ash, hello, my friend. It's been some time. Um, thank you for supporting the series. This is absolutely amazing. Um, thank you all so much. If we don't connect again, uh, I plan on doing a few more of these in the new year to, to blow some things out of the water. <laughs> for those of you in the UK I and in the Netherlands and Europe, I will see you in April. I am coming back. But until then, happy holidays and wishing you all the best. Aww. I'm going to hang out just for a couple of minutes. I'm going to stop the recording.